Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Amma ba'id Continue reading in the work Nasihati Lil Nisa by Um Abdullah Al Wadi'iyya Hafizahallahu Ta'ala in the chapter Al Hijabu wa Ghaddu Al Basr. The chapter with regards to the hijab, the legislative covering for the women and likewise lowering lowering the gaze. We have come to the portion that the author she mentioned Hafizahallahu Ta'ala wa inna min al isa'ati. Wa inna min al isa'ati man tashara bain al nisa anha talbasu al hijab wa takshifu an yadayha wa qadamayha wa aynayha wa la tasturuha inda khurujiha wa inna min al isa'a. There's a mistake here in the print. They should say al isa'a. Wa inna min al isa'a man tashara bain al nisa anha talbasu al hijab wa takshifu an yadayha. وقدميها وعينيها ولا تسترها عند خروجها فإن هذا ذريعة إلى الفتنة وقد يظهرها النقاب بمظهر حسن فيفتن عظم من كشف الوجه كله وقد تألم بعض الرجال من ذلك فقال. so she mentioned حفظها الله تعالى regards to the issue of the hijab that some of the errors or mistakes that some women fall into is or some of the errors and mistakes that are spreading amongst the women is that one of them she will wear the hijab and then she will uncover her hands and her feet and her eyes and she will not cover them properly whenever she leaves out of her home and indeed this is a means and a pathway that leads to fitna to trials and tribulation and she says and وَقَدْ يُذْهِرُهَا النِّقَابُ بِمَظْهَرٍ حَسَنٍ and uh, the, the, the niqab itself the niqab could uh, make the woman appear in a beautiful and nice manner, be a fitna for others greater than if she had uncovered her face in entirety. Then possibly a woman, she could wear the niqab in a manner that could be a greater fitna, that could be a, that in a manner that could uh, display her beauty or make her more attractive and make her a greater fitna than if she had revealed her face in entirety. وَقَدْ تَأَلَّمَ بَعْضُ الرِّجَالِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And some of the men, they have uh, been harmed by this, and they have felt great pain and problems because of this. And one of them he has said, and she mentioned some lines of poetry, لَهَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُ الْحَرِيرِ وَمَنْطِقٌ رَخِيمُ الْحَوَاشِ لَا هُرَاءٌ وَلَا نَزْرُ وَعِنَانِ قَالَ اللَّهُ قُونَا فَكَانَتَا فَعُولَانِ بِالْأَلْبَابِ مَا تَفْعَلُ الْخَمْرُ That one of the poet, he said about this affair, complaining and mentioning the pains, the heartache that he has found in the trials that he has met with regards to dealing with the likes of these women. He says that she has skin that is as soft as silk and uh, speech that is beautiful and her figure likewise and two eyes that Allah, he said, be and they were and they do with a sound-minded man that which alcohol does. And he meaning making them intoxicated, intoxicated with her beauty. Meaning that whenever he seen her, he seen her only her eyes in this manner. And it was a means to try him and a means for fitna. So this is very important for the woman to remember that she can be a great fitna for men. That she can be a great fitna for men. And men are tried by women. And this is a great trial and a test. And it has been connected by Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Usama ibn Zayd. Radiallahu anhuma. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا تَرَكْتُ بَعْدِي فِثْنَةً أَضَرَّ عَلَى الرِّجَالِ مِنَ النِّسَى That I have not left after me a trial and tribulation that is more harmful for men than women. I have not left a trial and tribulation. I have not left a fitna after me. I have not left a fitna after me. That is more harmful upon men than women. So the women can be a great trial and fitna for, for the men. And many men, they're tried by the women, especially those who do not cover properly or those who do not carry themselves properly whenever they leave the home. Whenever they leave the home. Or even today, some of them, they will not even leave the home. Rather, they will enter the homes of everyone by displaying themselves outwardly on social media. What do you have to be learned? Becoming a great child in fitna for mankind, never mind for one man. Never mind for one man. So she says now, Hafizahullah, 
حفيظها الله وإذا التزمت المرأة بواجبها نحو الحجاب وخرجت فعلى الرجال أن يغضوا أبصارهم So if the woman she holds fast to her obligation she upholds her obligation with regards to the hijab and she leaves meaning in the legislative manner that is proper then it is an incumbent obligation likewise upon the men that they lower their gaze then it is an incumbent obligation likewise upon the men that they lower their gaze فَإِنَّهَا قَدْ تَعْرِضُ لَهَا لَحْوَالُ وَهِيَ تَمْشِي فَرُبَّمَا تَأْتِي رِيحٌ فَتَرْفَعُ شَيْئًا مِنْ حِجَابِهَا وَنَحْوَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْأَسْبَابِ الَّتِي رُبَّمَا تَكْشِفُ شَيْئًا مِنْ زِينَةِ الْمَرْأَةِ So he, she says now, حَفِيظَهُ اللَّهِ Because it's possible that some circumstances may occur to the woman while she's walking. I mean, while she's walking in public, something may happen to her and possibly the wind could blow and uncover something from her, from her hijab and the like like this from the means that could lead to something from her beauty being exposed. Something from the beauty of the woman being exposed. So just because the woman, she is covered properly, does not make it permissible for the men to look at her. Uh, especially to look at her with desire and with lust. And to look at her in this manner, observing her beauty and uh, thinking uh, and imagining about about that beauty. What do you have to be learn? So even if she's covered, he must lower his gaze. Even here, many times a woman who is covered likewise can still be a fitna for many men, especially those who have a weakness in their heart with regard to this affair, especially those who are not married, especially those who are not married or having issues with regards to this. It's a great trial. It's a great trial for the men. It has been collected in Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ittaqu dunya, ittaqu ad-dunya, wa ittaqu an-nisa. That you have to fear the dunya. And you have fear, fear Allah with regards to the dunya and the trials of the dunya, wa ittaqu an-nisa. And likewise, fear the women. And you fear Allah with regards to them. Take precaution and, and take precaution from being tried from the dunya and take precaution from being tried by the women, by the women. So she says, now hafidhahullah. Wallahu Azza wa Jalla Yaqul and Allah the Most High He says Qul lil mu'minina yaghuddu min abasarihim wa yahfadhu furujahum thalika azka lahum Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the believing men that they must lower their gaze that they must lower their gaze and protect their private parts and this is more pure for them this is more pure and better for them and uh, this verse here is in Surah An-Nur. And just before this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions the verse of the light. And He says about Himself, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. That Allah, He is the light of the heavens and the earth. And then He mentioned the example of the light of Allah, meaning the iman and the sincere faith and the light that Allah blesses the believers with, the light in their heart, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how a believer is guided by that. And then a few verses later, Allah, he mentions this affair here, the affair of lowering the gaze and protecting the private parts. And this is an indication that the light of Allah and the beneficial knowledge is obtained by checking the eyes. By checking the eyes, as for if a person is negligent with, re with regards to his eyes, this will be a means to put out the light of insight in his heart. And as for the one who protects their eyes for the sake of Allah, from looking at that which is displeasing to Allah, then Allah will open the insight in their heart. So in this verse here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the believing men, orders the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say to the believing men, min abasarihim wa So hibdul basar, Protecting the eyes, lowering the gaze is the fundamental principle with regards to protecting the privates. And if a person is negligent with regards to their eyes, this will lead them to being negligent and violating great violations with regards to their privates. With regards to their privates, I mean, this is the step and this is the pathway that will lead to this affair by looking, by, by looking and not having uh, control of oneself with regards to their eyes and looking loosely 
uh, at, at others, at the opposite sex, and the lysitis, and that which is impermissible. So she says, وَفِي الصَّحِيْهَيْنِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْوَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كُتِبَ عَلَى بْنِي آدَمَ نَسِيبُهُ مِنَ الزِّنَى مُدْرِكٌ ذَلِكَ لَا مَحَادَ فَزِنَى الْعَيْنِ النَّظَرِ So she says that it has been connected in a sahihain. It has been connected in a sahihain from the hadith of Abi Hurayrah radiyallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said kutiba ala bini adam nasibuhu here in the text likewise there's a fatha on the ba and this is incorrect you should say nasibuhu naibu fa'il marfu' kutiba ala bini adam nasibuhu min zina that it has been de decreed and written for the son of Adam, his portion of fornication. He will fall into that inevitably. So therefore, the zina, the fornication of the eye, is to, is to look, is to look. The narration continues. Uh, she mentions only a portion, and it continues. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَزِينَ al-lisan." And the fornication of the tongue is to speak. And the soul it desires and craves, it lusts for this affair. And the privates, they testify to that, all of it, or they deny it. Or they deny it. So this is a very important narration with regards to this affair that the Prophet وسلم, is mentioning that the eye can fall into fornication and likewise the tongue can fall into fornication yani, but not the same fornication in the severity of actually committing that action of actually committing the action of intercourse out of wedlock but this is from the means that lead to that and for this reason it has been considered a type of zina but the ruling is not the same and it's definitely not as severe as actually committing intercourse, sexual intercourse out of wedlock, which is what is zina and fornication. But from the means that lead to this, and this is the issue here, and this is the point here, the means that lead to this is to look, to look at that which is haram and impermissible from the opposite sex with this, with this intention, with this desire, with this lust, with this shahwa, with this shahwa, al muharrama to look in this manner, and then likewise, to speak about that is the next stage and the next step to take the the next movement to go ahead and to speak and to make appointments and uh, to encourage one another upon the sefer what the other billah and the soul likewise desires that it lusts for that and this is something that the human being is tried with as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said kutiba this has been written and decreed ibn adam nasibuhu min zina that his portion has been decreed for him this is going to he is going to fall into that inevitably and he's going to be tried by that no doubt and the zina fazina fazina al-ain and nadar wazina al-lisan and mantiq and the the zina of the ain is to look is to look at that which is impermissible that which is haram so this is something that will occur and likewise to speak to speak about this affair the affair of fornication and to talk about that and to talk with the uh, with the with the opposite sex in this manner and that is impermissible that will lead to actually committing fornication that will lead to actually committing fornication so she says so the eye is fornication is that it will look, it will look. If one finds delight and pleasure in looking, and pleasure in looking. So this is a condition here, or a clarification of what is intended. Because sometimes one will see something that is not allowed for them to see, but they did not look at that intentionally. And whenever they see it, they immediately turn away and seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dislike that their eyes fell on that thing. So this one will not harm them. This one, 
it will not it will not harm them rather they will be excused for this and this has also come authentically on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the first look you're excused for but as for the second one you're not excused for so there is an issue called nadratu uh, al fajaa nadratu al fajaa the sudden look a person he sees something suddenly whenever he's not looking for it a person he sees something or she sees something suddenly that is impermissible to look at but they were not intending to look at that and then immediately they lower their gaze then this will not harm them and they will not be taken to account for that but if they look a second time after seeing that intentionally looking at that affair looking at that man or looking at that woman and if it's a man looking at a woman or a woman looking at a man with desire and taking pleasure in what they see then uh, this now they will be taken to account for that and this is the one that carries a sin and this is the one that will bring harm to a person's heart and affect their religion and affect and affect their religion so the one who's tried with this affair from the men the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned if a man he sees the the nadratul faj'ah and he sees something suddenly and uh, he seeks refuge with allah from that and he does not entertain that then he's encouraged to go to his family and to to go to his wife and to relieve that desire before it takes hold and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned in the authentic narration in sahih muslim from the hadith of jabir radiallahu anhu inna ma'aha mithlu adadi ma'aha because his wife she has the same thing that that woman has any that he saw that he saw the point is now that a person he's not held accountable for that first look or that first glimpse that is that occurs without intention especially this is especially important in these days and in these lands a person is tried with people with people from the muslims and from the non-muslims that they are uh, exposing themselves and a person is exposed to seeing them but the one who does not intend to look at them and he only sees them for a moment and then turns away or lowers their gaze and the likes like this then this inshallah will not harm them and they're excused for that as for if they entertain that and look again or continue to look and they do not turn away or they turn away and then they take another peek and then they entertain that and they take pleasure in that like she's saying here that the ayn the eye is fornication is to look if pleasure occurs in looking if pleasure occurs from that view and from looking as for if a person he's seen that suddenly or she's seen that suddenly and then they lowered their gaze and they said a'udhu billahi min ash rajim or they say astaghfirullah so on and so forth like this then inshallah this will not harm them but the one that will harm them is the one that is intentional or the one that continues the one that continues or the one that uh, is intentional on the second look so on and so forth so on and and so forth so she says now women and from the rights of the of the path and he from the pathways on on the street from the right from the rights of the path and he from the roads and on the street and the abidus and the likes like this is that one must lower their gaze as has come from the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and likewise this is a, a narration that she's referring to which is collected by bukhari and muslim from the hadith of abi sa'id radiyallahu anhu that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said iyyakum wal julusa fi at beware you have to take precaution from sitting in the pathway sitting in the avenues and sitting on the streets qalu ya rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam ma lana buddun min and they said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but there's no but we must. It's a must for us that we will sit in our gatherings and speak together and talk about uh, the affairs that we need to discuss. Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Fa either abaytum illa al majlisa. فَإِذَا أَبَيْتُمْ إِلَّا الْمَجْلِسَ فَأَعْطُوا الطَّلِيقَ حَقَّهُ And if you refuse except to sit in your gatherings, then you must give the pathway, you must give the road or the avenue. It's right. قَالُوا وَمَا حَقُّهُ And they said, and what is the right? The right of the tariq, the right of the pathway, the right of the road, the right of the street, the right of the avenue. قَالَ 
صلى الله عليه وسلم غض البصر والكف الأذى ورد السلام والأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he clarified that the right of the road, those who are going to be on the streets and in the pathways, is that they must lower their gaze. And this is the shahid that she's referring to, حفظه الله. And likewise, they must refrain the harm. And they must refrain from doing anything that will harm the other people on the pathways. And also, they must return the salam, as well as order that which is good and forbid that which is evil. So those who are going to be on the pathways and in the roads and in the streets and out in public and the likes like this, then they must lower their gaze. And also, they must refrain from harming others. And if they come across the believers, they must return to Saddam. And as well, they must advise and admonish the people in order that which is good and forbid that which is evil. And forbid that which is that which is evil. So this is from the rights. This is from the rights of the pathway, from the rights of the avenues. Whenever we go outside, outside of our homes, we have to lower our gaze. We have to check our eyes with the reins of the legislation and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to the blessing of eyesight. So she says, That maybe a look would do with a person's heart that which arrows will not do. And this person will become tried in this manner. And some people, they're tried with looking at that which is haram and impermissible, especially in these days, especially with these devices, especially when people go to where they think they're alone and no one can see them, the halawat, they're tried with these affairs, looking at that which is haram and impermissible. And many times, one look leads them to becoming tried, tried. People are literally, like she's saying here, maftoon, maftoon with looking at these impermissible and filthy images. Looking at these impermissible and filthy images. And all it took was to be loose with the eyes one time, two times, three times, and then they are trapped and drawn in and they cannot control their self. So this is what she's saying is very true and many people are tried by that. That by looking at that which is haram, it will do to a person's heart that which arrows are not able to do. And even by bringing harm and causing trials and weakening one's faith. And weakening one's faith. يقول الشاعر, she says, and the poet, he says, قول الحوادث مبدأوها من النظر ومعظم النار من مستصغر الشرر كم نظرة فعلت في قلب صاحبها فعل السهام بلا قوس ولا وتر أسر مقلته ما ضر مهجته لا مرحبا بسرور عاد بالضرر So she mentions some lines of poetry كل الحوادث مبدأها من النظر That all of the events يعني all of the, the events and the, the problems and the problems that occur they, the, the beginning of that is by looking by taking a peek, is by looking. And the majority of the fire is by way of the small sparks that are considered insignificant. And the point is that these major affairs that occur to a person, trials and tribulations that befall them, and the fitting that they get involved in, and the trials that their hearts are affected by, Many times this began, many times these things began by looking, by taking a look, by taking a look, peeking at the fitna, looking into these affairs. And the majority of the fire is, is started by these small sparks that are considered insignificant. The small sparks that are considered insignificant. Somebody may see some small sparks and be like, oh, these are nothing. But then eventually, if they're left unattended, then these sparks could burn down buildings or neighborhoods. Could burn down buildings or neighborhoods. So this is the example. A person, they'll just take one look and think nothing of it. And it could be a reason to destroy their heart. To destroy their heart. And when the heart is destroyed, then their religion and their faith becomes tried. And the worst of all trials in this life is to be tried in one's deen. And we ask Allah to not try us in our deen. So the poet, he says, كَمْ نَظْرَةٍ فَعَلَتْ فِي قَلْبِ صَاحِبِهَا فِعْلَ السِّهَامِ بِلَا قَوْسٍ وَلَا وَتَرِي And how many times has one look done to the heart of a person that which the arrows will do without any, without any bow and no string? Yani meaning that 
the if a person he shot with the arrow in his heart, it would it would bring him pain, and it may even finish him. But the looking in this manner at that which is unlawful to look at with pleasure and lust and desiring that thing, this will destroy a person's heart worse than the arrows. Asarra muqlatahu ma darra muhjatahu. He delighted his eyes with that which harms his soul and his heart. And this is the real, this is the outcome. Asarra muqlatahu ma darra muhjatahu. لا مرحبا بسرور عاد بالضرر that he found delight he delighted his eyes with that which harms his heart and his soul no welcome for any pleasure that brings about harm so this is a short lived pleasure the people who look at these affairs and they take they take pleasure in viewing the impermissible sights then later on after that it only comes back to their heart with pain and harm and hardship and heartache in their life because they're lusting and looking at something they cannot have and they cannot touch. And if they wind up even getting a hold of that, what you have to be loved in the pains and the trials and the evils that come about from actually falling into the act of fornication is even more severe and even more worse. We're discussing now just the steps that lead to that. And from those greatest steps is to take a look is to look. So she says, well, يقولوا آخر. And another, he says, قول للمليحة في الخمار الأسود ماذا فعلت بناسك متعبد قد كان شمر للصلاة ثيابه حتى عرضت له باب المسجد ردي عليه صلاته وسيامه لا تفتنيه بحق رب محمد And uh, he says, قول لِلْمَلِيحَةِ فِي الْخِمَارِ الْأَسْوَدِ Say to the cute, attractive one in her black khimar, مَاذَا فَعَلْتِ بِنَاسِكٍ مُتَعَبِّدِ What have you done to this pious, righteous, devout worshiper? قَدْ كَانَ شَمَّرَ لِلصَّلَاةِ ثِيَابَهُ He rarely, he got his, his clothes ready. He's ready to go for the salat. حَتَّى عَرَضْتِ لَهُ بِبَابِ الْمَسْجِدِ Until you appeared to him at the door of the masjid. This is a great trial. The people are writing poetry about these affairs. These lines of poetry and the likes of them are found in the works of the people of knowledge. And you will find the likes of these poem, these lines of poetry in the, in the works of Ibn Qayyim. In his work at da with Dawa, the disease and the cure. And the issues with regards to the dangers of, of looking and having, having loose eyes. Looking unnecessarily. And the problems that come about by that. Also the virtue of refraining the eyes and protecting the eyes and guarding the eyes and the benefits that come about from that. Likewise, he has another book called Rawlat al-Muhibbin wa Nuzhat al-Mushtaqeen. He has a book about the gardens of the lovers, any of those who truly love Allah Azza wa Jal. And likewise, the, the excursions of those who desire and yearn for the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned many issues about love. And this book, the love that is permissible and the love that is haram, the love that is obligatory and, this, and the likes like this. And he mentioned uh, chapters with regards uh, to these issues and many of these lines of poetry are found in both of these books and along with a number of other benefits. So my point is that this is something that is known from the times of old. From the times of old that a woman, she would try a man, even a man who was yani, has striving hard, who has tried kana shammara lis salat shammara lis salat literally tashmir is a is, it means that a person he will pull up his sleeves at tashmir tashmir yushammir and sa'id al jid this is an expression the arabs they use that a person he will he will pull his sleeves up from his forearms yani out of serious out of, out of seriousness and this is something that is known when people get serious they roll their sleeves up they roll their sleeves up and they're ready to get serious. They're ready to take things seriously. So in this expression for someone who is very diligent and someone who is very serious and engaged in what they're doing, they will say this, not necessarily meaning that he rolls up his sleeves, but what they're saying is that this person is diligent and this person is serious in that, in that which he's engaged in. So she's speaking about a man who's rolling up his sleeves, getting ready for the salat. And he's not really rolling up his sleeves because it's not allowed for a man to roll up their sleeves in the salat. Whether this is something that is disliked. But what she's intending is that this person, he has great dedication. And he's someone who is striving in the path of Allah. And he leaves his home preparing to go to the Salat. And he's devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except that whenever he reaches the door of the masjid, he's tried by one of those women. 
He's tried by one of those sisters. So sometimes the sisters, they're not cautious or maybe they don't fear Allah and they don't realize the trials that they're bringing about from their brothers even in the masjid or in the parking lot, especially on Jumu'ah, especially on Eid, whenever some of them are dressed in a manner that's not proper and not pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jalla, and then they're mingling freely or standing in the open, waiting to be seen, waiting to be a trial, waiting to be a trap and misused and misled by the devil, what he has a billah, and Mara to Aura, Pida Harajat Min Baiti Hash, the Shrafa has Shaytan. We have seen this narration a number of times. So, Kud Lil Mali Hati, Firhimadil Aswadi, Mada Faalti bin Nasik and Mutabidi, say to the to the attractive one in her black Himar, what have you done to the devout worshipper? Kad can a shammar al Salati Thiaba, who had to Arati Lahu, Bibab al Masjidi. He was dedicated and ready to establish the prayer. And uh, all the way until you appear to him at the door of the masjid. Ruddi alayhi salatu wasiyam. Give him his prayer and his fasting back. La taftini hi bihaqi rabbi Muhammad. Do not try him. I swear by the, I do not, and do not try him. I swear by the right of the Lord of Muhammad. By the right of the Lord of Muhammad. Do not try him. Do not try him. Do not bring trials and fitna to your brothers, uh, my noble sisters. So she says, وَيُقُولُ الْآخَرَ And another poet, he says, لَا يَأْمَنَنَّ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ أَخٌ أَخًا مَا فِي الرِّجَالِ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ أَمِينُ إِنَّ الْأَمِينَ وَإِنْ تَحَرَّزَ مَرَّةً لَا بُدَّ أَنَّ بِالنَّظْرَةٍ سَيَخُونُ The poet here, he says, that a brother should never trust another brother with the women. A brother should never trust another brother with the women. There is no men with regards to women who is trustworthy. The one who is trustworthy, even if he tries to be trustworthy and honest one time, then he must indeed betray by taking a look. By taking a look. And the looks, they lead to that which comes next. And the outcome is not praiseworthy. And the outcome is not praiseworthy. وَقَالَ آخَرَ And another one he says, نَظْرَةٌ فَابْتِسَامَةٌ فَسَلَامٌ فَكَلَامٌ فَمَوْعِدٌ فَلِقَاءُ فَكَلَامٌ فَمَوْعِدٌ فَلِقَاءُ نَظْرَةٌ One look. فَابْتِسَامَةٌ And then a smile. فَسَلَامٌ Then giving salam. فَكَلَامٌ And then now they're talking. فَمَوْعِدٌ فَلِقَاءُ And then they make an appointment and then after that there is a meeting. Then after that there is a meeting. So this is how the affair occurs. نَظْرَةٌ فَابْتِسَامَةٌ فَسَلَامٌ فَكَلَامٌ فَمَوْعِدٌ فَلِقَاءُ The first one, they will look. And then after that, they will smile, thinking that they're courteous. And then they'll give salam. As-salamu alayk. As-salamu alayki. Like this. Or as-salamu alayka. Ya akhi. And the likes like this. وَلِيَذِ billah. This is from the traps and the steps of the devil. فَكَلَامٌ Because after that, they start speaking. And then they make an appointment, فَلِقَاءُ And then they meet and don't ask after that what will happen whenever they meet. So she says, فَالْحَذَرْ مِنْ صَرْفِ الْبَصَرِ إِلَى الرِّجَالِ You have to take precaution from letting your eyes look at the men. وَكَذَلِكَ الرِّجَالِ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ يَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَنْيُحَافِظُوا عَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِ مِنَ النَّظَرْ إِلَى النِّسَىٰ أَلَى جْنَبِيَاتِ And likewise the men, they must fear Allah and guard their eyes from looking at the strange women. And the women who are not from their mahadim. وَرُبَّمَا مَنْ كَانَ هَذَا حَالَهُ أَنَّهُ يُعَاقَبُ فَتَسِيرُ مُرَأَتُهُ تَنْذُرُ إِلَى الرِّجَالِ وَتَتَطَلَّعُ إِلَيْهِمْ نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّ الْجَزَاءَ مِنْ جِنْسِ الْعَمَلِ وَكَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانِ These are wallahi, wallahi, great advices and admonishments. And uh, if we read in the books of, uh, of Adab, like Adab Al-Adab Shur'iyya by Ibn Muflih, Rahimahullah, the legislative manners by Ibn Muflih, by Ibn Muflih and likewise the poems, the Al-Alfiyya, Al-Alfiyya fil Adab, the, the hundred lines of poetry, and, and the manners and the lines like this you will find uh, by, by Abdul Qawi, uh, and the explanation about Hajawi, so on and so forth, you will find them mentioning the likes of these affairs. She's summarizing for us in a, in, a, in a good manner. May Allah reward her. She says that you must take precaution. You must watch out. Be, be aware from, uh, from turning your eyes to the men, from letting your eyes look at the men. And likewise, the men, they must, take, they must fear Allah and protect their eyesight from looking at the women 
who are not from their from their maharim and maybe maybe the one who this is their situation and he's somebody who looks loosely at men and women or at men or women and he, whether it's a woman or a man the one who looks loosely like this with their eyes possibly they will be punished possibly they will be punished like a man who does this possibly they will be punished and their woman will start to look at men possibly they'll be punished and their woman will start to look at men he's looking at other he's looking at other men's women Possibly, if he's not careful, Allah will punish him and his woman will start to look at other men. And she will start to observe them and uh, to take, ple take pleasure in that. Because the recompense is according to the type of the deed. And as you do, you will be dealt with. Kama tadinu to dan. Kama tadinu to dan. And as you do, you will be dealt with. Yani kama taf'aru yuf'aru bika. Wa kama tajzi tujza. As you deal with people and as you act, you will be dealt with and taken into account. And uh, in that work by Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, Rawdatu al muhibbin the garden of the, of, the, of the lovers, and those who truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, so he mentioned some benefits about guarding the eyes. And then he mentioned some statements from the people of knowledge, and I summarize one beneficial point here. Related to that which is mentioning كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانِ الْجَزَاءُ مِنْ جِنْسِ الْعَمَلِ وَكَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانِ That the recompense is according to the type of action and as you do, you will be dealt with. And as you do, you will be dealt with. So he mentioned, رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ يَجَزِي الْعَبْدَ عَلَى عَمَلِهِ بِمَا هُوَ مِنْ جِنْسِهِ And Allah subhanahu, he will recompense a person for his deeds according to the type of his action. فَمَنْ غَضَّ بَصَرَهُ عَنِ الْمَحَارِمْ عَوَّضُهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ إِطْلَاقَ نُورَ بَصِيرَتِهِ So if a person lowers their gaze and refrains from looking at that which is haram, then Allah will grant him in replace of that, the, that, that Allah in replace of that will open up the light of insight in his heart. فَلَمَّا حَبَسَ بَصَرَهُ لِلَّهِ أَطْلَقَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بَصِيرَتَهُ So whenever he refrained and withheld his eyesight for the sake of Allah, Allah opened up for him the insight and light in his heart. وَمَنْ أَطْلَقَ بَصَرَهُ فِي الْمَحَارِمْ حَبَسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ بَصِيرَتَهُ حَبَسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ بَصِيرَتَهُ And the one who lets his eyesight loose, looking at that which is haram and impermissible, then Allah Azza wa Jal will close up his insight. So this is something that is of utmost importance, especially for those who are striving to learn and seek knowledge, that they learn how to control their limbs, especially their heart and their tongue and their eyes and their ears. Especially their heart and their tongue and their eyes and their ears. The issue here, the discussion is about the eyes. The discussion is about the eyes and the dangers of being loose with one's eyes. One must learn how to fear Allah with their eyes. And those who are sincere in that, then Allah will open up their heart and grant them great insight. And they will be able to see clearly the realities of this life and the hereafter. And it will be a means of guidance for them. It will be a means of guidance for them from being concerned with their eyes whenever they leave their home and whenever they're on their device. From being concerned with their eyes and their religion and their heart and their relationship with their Lord whenever they leave their home and whenever they're alone with their device. And whenever they're alone with their device. So she says, Hafidhahullahu ta'ala, Wa inna min al khabti wal khalti an yuqala qalbi salim. And from the errors and the mistakes, any things that are mixed up in the, that which is in great confusion. From the great confusion and errors and mistakes that occur and things that have been just completely mixed up and incorrect and you call qalbi salim that one will say, my heart's clean, my heart's sound, my heart's good. I have a good intention to say this about oneself. Meaning it's okay. It's okay for me to talk to her. I can have a conversation with her. I'm going to call her to Islam. I'm going to call her to the Sunnah. I'm going to call him to the Sunnah. So on and so forth. And in my heart is pure. Alhamdulillah, my intention is good. I know myself. Like this, all of this is from deception. 
the deception of the devils. And this is not the, the proper understanding nor the correct way. She says, This is a filthy mistake in reality. This is a filthy mistake in reality. And the hearts are in the, head of, in the hands of Ar-Rahman. And the hearts are in the hands of Ar-Rahman. He turns them as he wills. And the devil, he flows to the son of Adam the, in the manner of the blood. And the fact that the heart is safe from trials and problems, there is nothing compares to nothing compares to this. Nothing compares to having safety in one's with regards to one's heart, that the heart will not be tried with these lusts and desires, that the heart will not be tried or overcome with these thoughts and these whims, that the heart will not be tried with misconceptions or misunderstandings and creed. And the lies like this, nothing is comparable to this. So a person should not jeopardize their heart and put their self in a situation where they will be tried. And the one who their heart is tried by women or opposite to that, meaning the one who her heart is tried by men, then they will never find ease of mind in their heart. Likewise, will never be, will never be content. And they're always going to be thinking about these things. These things are always going to rile up in their self, especially whenever they're alone and they're not engaged in any deeds from the dunya nor the hereafter. They're left alone idle, and then this will start to tear their heart apart and bother their mind and disturb them until they can't control their eyes anymore and they will open up those websites and the likes like this. Rather, they're going to be always occupied thinking about this affair. It will disturb their mind literally and it will cause them to have great worry and distress. Because this person here is just, want, just wants to actualize their whims and desires. It will, it will grow. It will grow. These desires were tried with them. They're inside the human being. We have these affairs. And this is from the trials of life that we're going to be taken to account with regards to. We have to check our desires for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and not put those desires where they're not allowed to be placed. Rather, they must be used and that which is lawful and permissive. And for this reason, it's legislated to get married. It's legislated to get married. And the one who is not able to get married, then, then they must strive against their soul to lower their gaze and to avoid the means that will corrupt their heart and uh, avoid the means that would lead them to be tried by these affairs until they're able until they're able to uh, to get married until they are able to get married and then they can uh, they can uh, partake in these pleasures in a manner that's lawful and permissible for them alhamdulillah and these problems in their heart will go away by the permission of allah because these lusts and desires will be put in the proper place in the proper place that is lawful and legislated so she says, So some people, whenever they're advancing upon marriage, whenever they decide that they're ready to start looking for a spouse in marriage, whether they're a male or a female, then if it's a male, he will start to let his eyes loose, looking at all of the women. Or if it's a female, then she will start letting her eyes look, taking a look at all of the men with uh, excuse or the proof claiming that they want to choose and make a choice who they want to get married to. So she says, And the response to this weak evidence or proof that they claim they have that the fact that the one who was proposing to get married looks at the one whom he's proposing to, this is legislated as has proceeded. Any of that that we say to them, yes, the man who is ready to get married and he's proposing to a woman, it's lawful for him to look at her. And also it's lawful for her to look at him and the limits of the legislation. This 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 here, this nadra, this view, this uh, look is lawful and legislated in the limits of the deen of Allah Azza wa as has proceeded in the narration that we have discussed in previous classes. So she says, وَكَمَّ فِي الصَّحِحَيْنِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ سَهْرِ بْنِ سَعْدِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ فِي قِصَّةٍ وَاهِبَةٍ
Qala fanadhara nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thumma tata'a ra'sahu just also also as is in the sahihain from the hadith of Sahal ibn Sa'd radiyallahu anhu in the story of the woman who offered herself in marriage to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he looked at her and then he lowered his head and then he lowered his head sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she says walakin ma yakunu an-nadhru ila kulli imra'ah taraha fi at-tariqi aw ila kulli rajulin aw ila kulli rajulin tal talqaynahu fi at-tariqi walakin ila al-khatib aw al-maktuba but the issue is here that you're not, you're not allowed to look at every woman that you see in the road or on the pathway or in the street and that you, your sister as well, you're not allow, allowed to look at every man that you meet. Rather, the one who is proposing is allowed to look at the one whom he's proposing to. Is allowed to look at the one whom he's proposing to. And likewise, the one being proposed to, she's allowed to look at the one who is proposing. Al-Khatib yanlur ila makhtubatihi. Wa hiya tanduru ilayhi. This is allowed. وَإِنَّ مِنْ أَسْبَابِ غَضِ الْبَصْرِ أَزَّوَاجِ And from the means of being able to lower the eyes, to lower the gaze, from, be, from the means of lowering the gaze is that one will get married. كَمَا فِي صَحِيحَيْنِ عَنْ عَبْدَ اللَّهِ بْنِ مَسْعُودٍ رضي الله عنه Just as in a صحيحين from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه رضي الله عنه that the قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said يا مع يا معشر الشباب يا معشر الشباب من استطاع منكم الباءة فليتزوج that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said oh group of youth oh you group of youth if whoever from you is able Whoever from you is able able to find the provisions for to, to find the provisions, whoever from you is able to find the provisions, then let him get married. Because it's more proper for you to be able to lower your eyes and likewise to be able to protect and guard your privates. And whoever is not able. And if he's not able to get married, doesn't have the finances and the provision to get married, then he must fast. Then he must fast because this is a, a means for him to check his desires. This is a means for him to weaken those desires and to check his soul in this manner. So getting married here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying is from the great means to be able to lower the eyes, to lower the gaze and protect the eyes from looking at that which is impermissible. And likewise, a great means to guard oneself, to guard one's privates from using them in a manner that is unlawful. That is unlawful. So therefore, it's highly encouraged for the for the believers in general to get married, especially the youth. Yeah, ma'ashara shabab. Man istata'a minkum al ba'ata fariyatazawaj. Oh, you, oh, you youth, oh, you group of youth, whoever is able from you to have provision and the means financially. To, to get married, then let him get married. Then let him get married because it's a great means for you to be able to lower your gaze and likewise to protect, to protect, to protect your your private parts. And whoever is not able to, woman lam And whoever is not able to get married, then the cure for him and the means to deal with these desires until he's able to get married is to fast, to fast an non-obligatory fast. So now she says ten bihun. بعض النساء تكشف على الأقارب وخصوصا إذا كان في البيت أسر ليس بمحارم. That here is uh, something to draw the attention to, and that is that some women they uncover themselves in front of their relatives, especially whenever there are families in the house that are not from the محارم, that are not from the محارم. فإنها تكشف بحجة أنها لا تقدر أن تلبس حجابها ما دام معا في بيت واحد. Because so this woman here she will uncover herself in front of them with a proof, claiming to have a proof that she's not able, that she's not able to wear her hijab so long as they are together in one house. والجواب and the response عن هذه الحجة الواهية. And the response to this weak proof, or so-called proof they have in this issue, anna laysa bil hawa, that the religion is not based upon desires. Wama rudda 
كثير من أمور الشريعة الشريعة وما رد كثير من أمور الشريعة إلا بسبب الهوى and many things from the affairs of the legislation were not rejected except because of desires كما قال سبحانه just as the most high he says فإن لم يستجيبوا لك فاعلم أنما يتبعون أهواءهم and if they do not respond to you أو محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم then you must know O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they, and if they do not respond to you, then you must know, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they are only following their desires. وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِنْ اللَّهِ And who is more misguided and in error than one who follows his desires without any guidance from Allah? Meaning no one is more, no one is in greater error or more misguided than the one who follows their desires without guidance from Allah, in Allah la yahdi al qawm al zalimin. Indeed, Allah He does not guide the unjust and wrongdoing people. Wa ta'atu al hawa wa taqdimuhu ala ala ahkam al shari yu'taburu. She mentions now, Habibah Allah, a great benefit closing this issue. Wa ta'atu al hawa wa taqdimuhu ala ahkam al shari yu'taburu ibadat lahu. That obeying the desires and showing preference to the whims over the legislative rulings, over the rulings of the legislation, is considered worshiping the desires. It's considered worshiping the desires. Kama qala subhana, just as the Most High, He says, Araita man ittaqada ilaha hu hawa, afa anta takunu alayhi wakila. Have you not seen the one who has taken his desires, his God as his desires, and the one who's taken his desires as his God? And, uh, and, you, and are you? going to be a disposer of his affairs, and you're not in charge of his affairs. You need the people who take their desires uh, as, their, as their Lord. And it's been mentioned from Al-Hassan Al-Basri, Rahimahullah, he said about this person, Have you not seen the one who takes his desires as his ilah, as his object of worship? This is the one, لا يهوى شيئاً إلا ركبه هو الذي لا يهوى هو الذي لا يهوى شيئا إلا ركبه وإلا يركبه that he's the one who does not desire anything except for he will commit it except for he will perpetrate it anything they want if that desire arises in their heart they do it whatever they want whatever they like so some people they're tried like this in this affair they cannot control their desires what I wanted to what I want to I want this I want that whatever their heart wants they have no control over it they will go mad trying to satisfy their lust and their desires, and they will do very despicable things. This will lead them to do very despicable things many times, violating the rights of others and also transgressing the limits and following their desires and the likes of these affairs here falling in to that which is not praiseworthy from these lowly actions of fahisha. So she says, كان من دعاء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما روى الترمذي عن قطبة بن مالك that because of the dangers of following desires it was from the supplication of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as has been narrated by الترمذي رحمه الله تعالى from the narration of قطبة Ibn Malik radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would say Allahumma jannibni munkarat al-akhlaq wal-a'mal wal-ahwa wal-adwa and she says wal-hadithu sahih wal-hadithu sahihun and the narration is authentic so she says that because of the dangers of following the desires, it was from the supplication of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that which is narrated by Til'a Tirmidhi rahimahullah from the hadith of Qutba ibn Malik radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would say, Allahumma, Allahumma jannibni munkarat al-akhlaq. Oh Allah, take me away from the, from the evil manners. والأعمال and the evil deeds والأهواء and from the evil desires والأدواء and from the evil and from the evil diseases والحديث صحيح and the narration is is authentic and uh, has come in this wording like this اللهم جنبني and it also has come اللهم إني أعوذ بك من منكرات الأخلاق والأعمال والأهواء and this is the wording 
that is uh, in uh, At-Tirmidhi. The wording that is in At-Tirmidhi, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min munkarat al-akhlaqi wal-a'mali wal-ahwa. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the evil manners and actions and desires. From the evil manners and actions and desires. Some other wordings likewise. It has come an addition. Wal-adwa. Allahumma jannibani munkarat al-akhlaqi wal-amari wal-ahwai wal-adwa. O oh Allah, take me away. Take me far away from the evil manners and the evil deeds and the evil desires and the evil diseases and the evil and the evil diseases so this is a, a great benefit for us to take heed with regards to the issue of the hijab that has proceeded now the discussion is about lowering the gaze the discussion is about lowering the gaze and the eyes these are these are blessings the eyesight is a blessing and a favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for a believer to realize these affairs the relationship between al-ahkam al-shara'iyya and the promise of Jannah and the threat of al-nar. The, the relationship al-irtibat al-wathiq bain al-ahkam al-shara'iyya wa bain al-wa'adi bil-jannati wa al-wa'idi bil-nar. Wa'idi bil-nar, to pay attention to this affair, my noble sisters. There's a great relationship between the legislative rulings and the promise of paradise and the threat of the fire. The promise of paradise and the threat of the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَاللَّهُ يَدْعُوا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَالْمَغْفِرَةِ بِإِذْنِ And Allah, he calls, he calls all of mankind, he calls the people to Jannah and to forgiveness. Allah is calling and inviting all of us to Jannah and to forgiveness, inviting us to his Jannah and inviting us to have forgiveness from him subhanahu wa ta'ala بِإِذْنِهِ بِإِذْنِهِ And this is the shahid. وَاللَّهُ يَدْعُوا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَالْمَغْفِرَةِ بِإِذْنِهِ And Allah, He calls to al-jannah and to forgiveness by His permission. بِإِذْنِهِ By His permission. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, and this is from the benefits that we read this morning in the tafsir class, reading from the tafsir Ibn Kathir, the abridgment of Shaykh Ahmed Shakir, rahimahullah, that Ibn Kathir, he mentioned that this verse here, Rahimahullah, bi'ithnihi, Allah, he calls to Jannah, to the Jannah, he invites to the Jannah and to forgiveness, bi'ithnihi, by his permission, he said, ay bi shar'ihi, wa bima amara bihi, wa ma naha anhu, meaning that Allah, he calls to Jannah and invites the people to forgiveness by his permission, meaning by his legislation and that which he orders and that which he forbids. And that which he orders, and that which he forbids. So if you hope to have mercy and forgiveness and the pleasure of Allah, and you hope to enter paradise, then you must abide by these legislative rulings and obey Allah and that which he orders and commands and avoid and stay away from that which he has forbidden and reprimands and uh, does not allow, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's of utmost importance to learn the legislative rulings in our life daily, beginning with the proper creed. And the greatest ruling is the ruling to worship Allah alone with no partners. And the greatest prohibition is to associate any partner with Allah in any aspect of worship whatsoever. Whatsoever. And then to establish the the and to establish the religion outwardly in action, beginning with the salah and uh, the conditions of the salah from the tahara and the purification and the rest of the affairs the affairs of the religion including the way that we earn our money and how we wear our clothes whenever we go outside in public and how we wear our clothes whenever we go outside in public all of these affairs there are great legislative rulings and there are great legislative manners and etiquettes that we must abide by if we hope to have forgiveness from allah and jannah wallahu yad'u ila الْجَنَّةِ وَالْمَغْفِرَةِ بِإِذْنِهِ أَيْ بِشَرْئِهِ وَبِمَا أَمَرَ بِهِ وَنَهَا عَنْهُ Allah, He invites and calls the people to Jannah and to have forgiveness from Him by His permission, meaning by His legislation and by that which He orders and that which He forbids. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم.